Hi everybody. So let's start off by creating our ramp body. So in our list of setup functions, let's make a function called create ramp. Let's scroll down to just above our key controls and make that create ramp function. All right, so here's our key controls, here we go. And we're just doing the same thing as the ground body and the player body. We're making a body shape. I'm just making a new cannon box and I'm passing in a new cannon vector three and that's going to give the dimensions of that box. And then we're going to make a new ramp body. So I'm calling it ramp body. I'm creating a new cannon body and I'm setting the mass to zero. I don't want it to move with gravity. And I'm passing in the shape that we created up here, ramp shape. And I'm passing in the same material we used for the ground, ground material. Then I'm just changing the position of the ramp body. So it's going to be at X is zero, Y is one, and Z is 15. And then I'm going to rotate it because I want it to be a ramp. So I'm setting the quaternion of that ramp body from this axis angle. And the axis angle will be the X axis. We're going to rotate it on the X axis. By how much? By this much. Minus math.pi divided by 12. So pi divided by 12 is 15 degrees. So I'm rotating it minus 15 degrees on the X axis. And then I'm just adding that body to our world. And if we take a look, right on, here's our ramp. And you can see that we can use it as a ramp and fly off of it. And it rotates around. Awesome. Now let's make a contact material. A contact material will define the bounciness, that's called restitution and friction, of the player body when it's on the ground and the ramp. And we can play around with those settings to make it slippery or sticky and bouncy or less bouncy. So let's create our contact material in our create player function. So if we scroll up from our create ramp function, here we go. We'll put the contact material right below the speeder material here. So here's our contact material. I'm calling it slippery ground CM. So I'm creating a new Canon contact material. I'm passing in the two different materials that are touching, the ground material and the speeder material. And then I'm using a curly bracket here because these options are set as an object. So you can set the friction zero is no friction, restitution, which is bounciness, one is very bouncy, zero is no bounce, and then these other four settings control how spongy the collision is. And you can play with these values to get the effects that you want. The E in these values stand for how many zeros follow the one. This is nine zeros following the one. We can't forget to add the contact material to the world, and that's what we're doing here. All right, so there's our contact material. Now we're gonna load our speeder model because we need the model for the chase cam. Let's get our land speeder model. So at sketchfab.com, you can get free 3D models. To download models from Sketchfab, you're gonna have to create an account. For example, this is the one I'm using. If we scroll down a bit here, it says download 3D model, and that's what you click. We want to download it as a auto converted format GLTF. We want the GLTF model and just click download and it will download it as a zip file. So the link for this particular model is in the description below. After you've downloaded it, it's in a zip file, you're gonna have to extract it. So just right click and hit extract. There we go and open it. You'll get a license and that'll tell you when you can use it. There'll be two files, a bin file and a GLTF file. We're gonna put both of these files, the bin and the GLTF files into our models folder in our code editor. So I've created a models folder in my code editor, and you can just drag and drop those two files into that folder. Okay, next we're gonna need a GLTF loader. The link for that is in the description below. The GLTF loader is needed to load the GLTF model. In the Mr. Dube 3 js GitHub page, go into the examples folder, and the JSM folder, and the loaders folder, and you want the GLTF loader JS. You're gonna to have to download that and then put it into your code editor. So you can just click raw and then save as, and it saves as a JavaScript file, so just hit save, and then drag and drop it into your modules folder. And to use it, we're gonna to need to write an import statement. So at the top here, so import GLTF loader from, and then from the path in this modules folder and you're gonna to have to click on it and change the path inside that file. So click on it. It'll say it's importing all these things 
and you're going to have to change this path to where 3.module.js is in your code editor directory. Mine's in my modules folder and now the GLTF loader can find 3.module.js in my code editor. Now we're ready to use our GLTF loader to load our GLTF model of the land speeder. So first in the declare variables section let's add this variable speeder mesh beside speeder body. This will make speeder mesh available to other functions in our program. Speeder mesh will be the 3JS object of our land speeder model. Okay, let's scroll down to the create player function. Okay, here's our create player function. So we're going to load the model after we've added the speeder body to the physics world. So I'm just going to make some space here. Make sure we're still within this function. So make sure we're adding code above this bracket. Okay, so let's create a new instance of the GLTF loader so that we can load the model. I'm using the GLTF loader to load that 3D model and this is the path of that model in my code editor directory. And then I'm passing this model and I'm calling it GLTF into this function. And inside this function, I am saying that all the meshes in this model as a group, that's what GLTF.scene is, is going to be passed into this speeder mesh object. So speeder mesh is the 3JS mesh object for that 3D model. And then I'm just adding that speeder mesh object to the scene. And now we can see it, except it's all black. It's all black because we haven't added any lights to the scene. And you can see it's upside down and it's really, really big. So we should scale it down first. That looks more in line with that box. We can tweak our speeder body above here uh, right away to make them both the same size, but that's pretty close. Now let's make the speeder mesh the same location and rotation as the speeder body. So now I've just copied the position of the body and the rotation of the body and made it the same as the position of the mesh and the rotation of the mesh. So now we see that the speeder is right side up, but see it hasn't fallen down to the ground. Gravity is not affecting it yet because we're not constantly updating the speeder mesh position and rotation. We just did it this once, but we have to do it in the animation loop so it, the mesh can always be the same position and rotation as our body. So let's do that. So let's scroll down to the animation loop. So in this function, move speeder, just above here, we are checking the speed and setting the position based on our arrow keys. So now let's set its position and rotation based on our body. So now you see we have an error. So all I've done is the same thing as before. I'm taking the speeder body position and making it the speeder mesh position. And I'm copying the speeder body quaternion or rotation and making it the same as the speeder mesh quaternion. We're getting an error because the mesh isn't loading in time. So we're going to use this little if statement here. So if there's a speeder mesh present, so after it's done loading, then it will always update the position and rotation of that. And if we look here, see it's fallen down onto the ground and it's the exact same position of that speeder body. So that's perfect. So if I hit the arrow keys, what will happen? There we go. See, I hit the arrow keys. Now our land speeder is constantly updated to the right position and rotation. Awesome. So see that the, the land speeder is just a little bit bigger than the body. And the land speeder isn't high enough off the ground for my comfort. So let's, let's change these settings here. So let's scroll up to the create player function. Let's set the body position to two on the Y axis. So it'll be a little bit above the ground. So in this speeder body shape, so let's change it to one unit wide, one unit high, and 2.5 units long. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's pretty close, eh? Just the little engines stick out here, the thrusters, but everything else is inside. I'm pretty comfortable with that. And if we use our arrow keys, Yeah, that's great. So now let's add some lights so we can see this thing. So let's scroll up to the top. So in our list of setup functions, just below orbit controls, let's go init lights. And this will create the lights for our scene. And let's scroll down to orbit controls. And just below orbit controls, we'll create our function init lights. 
Here in our init lights function, I'm just creating a new three-directional light. I'm setting its position to uh, this, X, Y, Z, and adding that light to the scene. So now, there we go, look at that. There's our speeder, awesome. So in the next episode, we'll add our chase cam, we'll add a reset button, so it will bring it back to the start instead of hitting the browser button, and we'll add our ground textures.